Welcome back, Dorkfest, to our last video lesson for Unit 7. Today we're going to talk about graphing linear inequalities with two variables. So this is going to be very similar to Unit 5. So you might want to go back and take a look at Unit 5 from first semester on graphing linear functions. Today is going to be very similar, except we're going to be looking at the inequalities. So let's jump right into it. First of all, again, we're going to be looking at two variable inequalities, which is very different than what we've been doing from this chapter up to this point. You might see an inequality such as uh, 2x minus 4 is greater than 8. Just made this problem up, but this is a one variable inequality because it only has one variable within it. So how do we find a solution if we have an inequality with two variables? Notice here we have the variables x and y, so we have two different variables. Very similar to getting something like y equals 2x plus 4. There's another one, but this is an equation with two variables. Okay, so remember we talked about this, a linear function or just those uh, equations with two variables. In order to be a solution, we need to have a point of x and y such that when I plug in x for x and y for y, Whatever I'm going to get, the end result, whatever I get here, is going to equal whatever I get on that side. So the two sides will equally to each other. The same thing is true for inequalities. If I give you the point 4, 3, 4 is representing, by, or is representing x, I'm sorry, 3 is representing y. So if I take these two things and look at my inequality 2x minus 4y, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and plug this x in for x and this y in for y. So I'm going to get the inequality 2 times 4 minus 3, and I want to know, is that less than 4? In order for this point to be a solution, this inequality must be true. So now I just got to simplify. 2 times 4 is 8. Minus 3 is going to be less than 4. 8 minus 3 is 5. Is 5 less than 4? And no, this is not true. So is this a solution? And and you get N-O, which is German for no, just in case you didn't know that. All right, so next one is negative 2, 0, a solution to this problem. Y is less than 2x plus 4. So let's take a look here again. This is x. This is y. I'm going to take each of these and plug them in. So instead of y, I'm going to place 0 is less than 2 times negative 2 plus 4. So I have to simplify this right side. I'm going to see if in the end result is it going to be or is 0 going to be less than. So 2 times negative 2, that is negative 4, plus 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So is 0 less than 0? No, this is also not true. Those have to be equal to each other. So this one's also no. Okay, so in order for, here's kind of the point I'm getting to. In order for a point, get it? Uh, to be a solution to an inequality, it must satisfy um, the inequality, which is different than when we had equations where this one, this would be true for an equation, but is not true for the inequality. This one, 5 is not less than 4, so this one's not true for the inequality, so it's not a solution. So in order for an, an, a point to be a solution, it must make the inequality true. All right, so next thing is I want to be able to represent this graphically. Just like um, we did with uh, graphing a linear function, we're going to now graph a linear inequality because we can represent all of the solutions here on a graph. Instead of looking at a single solution, we can put all of them. Just like we would for a line, we could plot all the points that would work for this line, and all those points would represent solutions. We're going to do the same thing with inequalities. So first thing, note the inequality y is less than or equal to negative x minus 3. Notice this is very similar to y equals negative x minus 3. This should make you uh, kind of a bell go off in your head. Think about, hey, that's a, a linear function. That's something that I can graph. So remember, how do we graph a linear function? Well, first of all, we're going to check to see if this is in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b, and it certainly is, okay? But instead of the equal sign, what we're going to have here is an inequality. So I have the inequality less than or equal to. 
So the first thing I want to identify in order to graph this, remember, is I'm going to look at the slope. So here the slope we see is negative x, right? Negative x. What's the number in front of x is negative 1. I'm going to place a 1 underneath that. My y-intercept then is the number by itself. That's negative 3. So I can graph this just like I would a line. Okay, I'm going to go down 3, start with my y-intercept. Then I'm going to apply my slope of negative 1 over 1. means go down 1, right 1. Okay, so rise is negative 1, run is 1, and I can plot all these points. I can go backwards as well by going up 1, left 1. It does the same thing. So I'm just going to plot as many points as I can here, and I'm able to get a good amount. Okay, now, graphing my line then, like we did before, then we can put the line through all of these points. Oh, that's kind of nasty, but that's okay. Okay, now, no, notice we are dealing with the inequality y is less than or equal to negative x minus 3. Okay, so we have the inequality less than or equal to, which again represents it could be less than or it could be equal to. Okay. So I want to pick all points. I want to pick a point of x and y that satisfy both of these terms. Okay? I want to pick an x and y that's less than. Okay? That if I were to plug in an x and plug in a y, the end result is going to be true. It's going to be less than. Or it could be equal to. Now the equal to is important. Any point that lies on the line is going to satisfy this part of the inequality. So all of these points that I have drawn, all of those hold true. But notice how we are dealing with an inequality. Whoopsie daisy, sorry about that, folks. Notice how we are dealing with an inequality. So we want to know not only the equal to, but we want to know what less than represents. Notice how this line splits our graph into two regions, the top region and the bottom region. I want to know which region of the graph satisfies this inequality of less than. We know that the equal to are all these points here, but what part of the graph represents less than? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick a test point. Okay, we're going to pick a test point in one of these regions. And if the test point works out, okay, then we know that that part of the graph is going to be the solution. If the test point does not work out, then we know it's not going to be a part of the solution. So I'm going to pick the easiest test point there is, and that's this one right here. What is this point? It's a point of 0, 0. So I'm going to choose the point 0, 0, and I want you guys to always choose this as your test point. Okay, so the 0 is x, 0 is y. What I'm going to do is take this point 0, 0 and plug it into my graph. So I'm going to get, or my equation, or my equation, or my graph, my inequality. So I'm going to have 0 is less than or equal to negative 0 minus 3. Negative 0, that drops out. That's nothing. And 0 is less than or equal to negative 3. So you ask yourself, is 0 less than or equal to 3? No. 0 is actually greater than 3, so this doesn't work out. So does my test point work? No, it does not. Meaning, all the points in this region of the graph do not satisfy the inequality. But all the points in the other region, then, must satisfy the inequality. Meaning... All the points in this region of the graph down here are a solution to this inequality. So what I'm going to do then is I am going to go ahead and shade this region that represents any point that's a part of the solution. Now just to prove it to you, I'm going to choose a point. Okay? I'm going to choose a simple point right here. That is a point of negative 3 negative 3. And let me do the same thing here. This is x and this is y. So if I plug these into our inequality, I'm going to have negative 3 is less than or equal to negative negative 3 minus 3. All I did is plug that in for x. Okay. Now notice here, boom, boom, that's going to turn into a positive. So I'm left with negative 3 is less than or equal to 3 minus 3. Well, 3 minus 3 is 0. So I get negative 3 is less than or equal to 0. So is negative 3 less than 0? Yes, it is. So notice how this point ends up making the inequality true. So therefore, that point is a part of solution. And any point that lies in this shaded blue region right here represents a solution to our inequality.
Okay, so make sure you jot down these steps because these are the steps you're going to use. I'll show you a shortcut in a little bit, um, and we'll talk about this idea of a dashed line versus a solid line. All right, next example. So first thing, we have x plus 4y is greater than negative 20. First thing I want to do is I want to make sure this is in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. I know that there's no equal sign here. We're dealing with an inequality, but it's the same form. So I'm going to take this, and first of all, I notice it's not. I'm going to have to rewrite it in slope-intercept form. So I've got to get y by itself. First thing I need to do is subtract x to both sides. That's going to give me 4y is greater than 20 minus, sorry, let me erase this. There we go. Uh, this is going to be negative 20 minus x. We're at the negative sign there. Then I'm going to divide by 4. Divide everything over here by 4. And I'm going to have y is greater than negative 20 divided by 4 is negative 5. This one I have negative 1x over 4. So that's going to be minus 1 over 4x. Okay, now graphing this, this is in slope-intercept form. Notice the number in front of x, that's my slope. So I know my slope is going to be negative 1 over 4, which means down 1, right 4. I know my y-intercept is going to be negative 5. Okay, that's the second number by itself. So graphing this, um, I then know I'm going to start here at negative 5. I'm going to do two points here. I'm going to go then down right, or sorry, down 1, right 4. I can't talk today, kids. So it's down one, right four. I can do another point by doing the opposite, by going up one, left four. So I can choose another point right here, and then I can draw my line between these. Now I'm going to pause for a second before I go ahead and draw this line. Notice how this inequality is simply greater than. So we have the inequality greater than, right? Notice how this one, unlike the last one, is not equal to. So this one cannot be equal to it. So, when I draw this line, because it can't be equal to, I do not want to include these points that I just drew. These points would satisfy the equation y equals negative 5 minus 1 over 4x. But I don't want the equal to. I don't want that. I don't want any of these points. So the way I'm going to distinguish this is by doing a dashed line. The dashed line is saying, I am not going to include these points. So I'm going to use a dashed line to show that those points are not included. All I want to do is show the values that are greater than this. Okay? So the second thing was choose a test point. Now that I have a dashed line, let's choose a test point. The test point I always want you to choose is 0, 0. Why 0, 0? Because it's the easiest point. So what I'm going to do is take this test point and plug it into my inequality 0, is that greater than negative 5 minus 1 over 4 times 0? You may freak out and say, ah, fractions, but negative 1 fourth times 0, that drops out. You're left with 0 greater than negative 5. Is 0 greater than negative 5? Check, please, that works. That means if the test point works, if 0, 0 works, that means anything in this region of the graph is a solution. So to show that, I am going to highlight every point in this graph. The only thing I am not highlighting is everything below the line. Because everything greater than, which is above the line, works out. Okay, so if you may have noticed a shortcut in the last two examples. When we had less than, we shaded below the line. When we had greater than, we shaded above. Okay, so that's going to be the thing I'm going to want you to look for. If you see greater than or greater than or equal to, you are going to shade above the line. If you see less than or less than or equal to, you are going to shade below the line, meaning all the points above or below will satisfy the equation. The other thing to, rep to remember is that if you see less than or greater than, you are going to use a dashed line. And if you use less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you are going to use a solid line. Okay, so there's going to be a couple things you're going to have to pay attention to. So next example, I have y is less than negative 6 over 5x plus 1. I'm going to start first by graphing this. My slope is the number in front of x, negative 6 over 5, and my y-intercept is 1. So I'm going to pl plot my y-intercept first of plus 1. Then I'm going to go apply my slope, which is down 6. 
which is going to take me to here. Write 5, which will give me a point right there at 5, negative 5. Okay, then I'm going to see if I can go up. So can I go up 6, left 5 while I run out of room? It would be somewhere about right here. I'll just plot the point just so we can see it, uh, but it would be somewhere around there. Okay, then drawing my line. Before I do this, I'm going to check. Should I draw a dashed line or a solid line? Well, we're going to look at the inequality. The inequality here is simply less than. Okay, so less than is going to follow that rule. I'm going to put a dashed line because I'm not going to include the points on the line. Those points on the line are not a part of my solution. Okay, so I'm going to draw a dashed line now. I want to represent all the points that are part of my solution. To do that, I'm going to shade one region of the graph. I have two ways to do this. Either shade it to the bottom or shade it to the top. How do I know which one? Well, here's the shortcut. If it's less than, that simply means I'm going to shade below the graph. Okay? So less than means you're going to shade below. Okay? So here we go. You can take your pen. I like to use my little highlighter tool, and I'm going to shade the entire region below this graph, basically saying any point within this shaded region, region is a solution to this inequality. Alrighty, last example. If you feel like you can do this one on your own, go for it. Otherwise, Big Daddy's going to go and do this one because it's going to require some extra little steps. First one, follow our rules. Is this in slope-intercept form? No, this is not in slope-intercept form. So we're going to have to take this first and write it in slope-intercept form. So again, I want y equals mx plus b. Now I know there's no equal sign, but again, the form is what we want. So I want y by itself. First thing I'm going to do is subtract 5x from both sides. That's going to give me 4y is less than or equal to negative 12 minus 5x. Then I'm going to divide by 4. Okay, divide both sides or everything over here by 4. That's going to give me y is less than or equal to Negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. Negative 5 divided by 4, I can't do that, but I know that this number is going to be my slope, so I'm going to leave it alone. Okay, so now graphing this, I'm going to identify that, hey, negative 5 over 4, that's my slope. So my slope is negative 5 over 4, that means down 5, right 4. My B is negative 3, that's my y-intercept. Once I've identified those and I can plot this, I'm going to go down 3 for my y-intercept. Then I'm going to plot my slope, which is down 5, right 4. Well, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, oh, it's going to be somewhere down here. I kind of run out of space, so let's go opposite. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to be at the point of negative 4, 2. So I'll have a point there. Draw my line. Now the next thing I'm going to check is do I have a dashed line versus a solid line? I know the inequality is less than or equal to, so I know that's going to be a solid line. Okay, so I'm going to draw a solid line between these two. Ooh, that's a smooth line, I tell you right there. Take a look at that one. Holy cow. I should get paid for drawing a line that straight and that solid. That's pretty sweet. Okay, now next one, I want to represent the inequality less than or equal to, so I need to shade a region. Notice that it's less than, so I'm going to shade the region below the graph. So everything down here is going to get shaded. And there we have it. Okay, so again, this is telling me that every point on the line and all the points in this shaded region would be a solution to this inequality. All right, kids, this one might have been a little bit different. Uh, make sure you jot down any questions. Make sure you take a look at the steps. Um, we'll see you in class. Good luck on the practice problems and good luck on the mastery check. Uh, and then you just got your test coming up, babies. So we'll see you in class. Peace.